Our Father, we are grateful for this, uh, another opportunity to pause in your presence and let your spirit move and have his way. As we talk about faithfulness, oh God, we pray that your spirit would just wash over us and that at last, that when you shall come into your eternal kingdom, that we shall be found faithful without the loss of one. Speak to us now. We recognize we're in your presence and we want to hear your voice. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, welcome. Let me uh, begin by just sharing a few thoughts with you before we get right into the message. Um, because as I look all around us, you're probably, uh, like myself, inundated with uh, information and um, with a lot of stuff going on. So I want to share with you uh, today, we've come for this particular hour, this particular moment, for some good news. You probably have heard a lot uh, of news and not very good, everything from racism to violence to the pandemic and politics. And none of that um, is good or has sounded uh, good to our ears. And it probably has uh, coupled with the fact that many of you and us have been cloistered in and uh, social distancing. And you probably are, are experiencing a lot of stress about now. You're probably uh, completely tired and worn out and not sure what to do with your energies and strength. And maybe you aren't getting your exercise in. So just let me pause for just a few moments and encourage you that um, maybe by God's grace, we can endeavor to spend more time in good news, in the word of God, the Sabbath school lesson, the spirit of prophecy. And as we do that, we'll find ourselves feeling a lot better uh, take a break from watching TV, the news, whatever your source of news is, even if you're reading it. Um, try minimizing and taking in less of that kind of reading. If you're on the social media, uh, try to limit uh, less of that. Um, just limiting the amount of information that you're taking in. And so while you're doing that, I want to encourage you to take some deep breaths, breathe deeply. Uh, stretch, do a few stretching exercises um, to help yourself out there. Uh, stay on a good diet, eat healthy, um, as well as um, endeavor to get a well, to keep well-balanced meals in your life. Uh, now is not the time to be binging on garbage and um, these processed foods. So I want to encourage you to uh, seek a healthy diet. If possible, get some regular exercise, go for a walk. I mean, that's minimal. It's what we can do is uh, just to walk around the neighborhood, maybe even an opportunity to witness and share your faith with uh, a person or two. And then uh, doesn't, I don't think I need to say this, but um, uh, limit your intake of alcohol, no alcohol, <laughs> uh, and our drugs. Uh, you want to uh, take those out of your diet or um, just eliminate them from your, your way of life, your lifestyle, period, if you happen to be consuming those things. Uh, take some time to just unwind, um, to just unwind, listening to some good Christian music or even classical music, just to unwind and connect. Uh, one of the points I was going to make earlier today that each of us uh, should take, um, uh, should try to call or contact at least two or three members of our congregation, just to touch base and just say, hey, I was thinking about you, praying about you, wondering how you're doing. You don't need to spend 20, 30 minutes, two or three minutes just checking in, just wanting to see how you're doing so that others will know that um, you care and that somebody else uh, cares about what's going on uh, in their lives. And so we want to encourage you in, in, in that vein, if you will. Um, so, um, uh, so if you will uh, do that, and then um, in connecting with others, and then uh, understanding your risk. Uh, there's a lot of information out today concerning the pandemic, a lot of bad and uh, misinformation. 
Um, there's not a lot of need of knowing what's going on in states other than the one you're in. I mean, unless you have family there. But I would encourage you to go to the state's website and if you want to catch up on what the latest news concerning uh, the virus, the pandemic in our area, then go to the state website. Or uh, minimally um, check out the uh, CDC website to make sure you're getting valid and appropriate information so you aren't dealing with misinformation. And of course, having the correct information will also, I think, will lessen your stress. Uh, take care of your mental health. Uh, and some of the things I was talking about, listening to good music, getting out, getting some air, exercise, calling and speaking with others, prayer, uh, those types of things we want to highly encourage as well. Um, then take care of your physical health. If you need to um, make an appointment with your caregiver, uh, do that. Uh, if there's some way that I or the, the, the staff of elders can be of assistance with you, pray with you or your family, uh, if we have not contacted you, then contact us. We'd be delighted to do that. And if some of you who are listening, if you are unable to get on to um, the Zoom platform where you can visibly be seen or want to be seen, uh, then please let me know as well, and I will endeavor to work with you in that regard also. So we would appreciate that. So if you'll keep those things in mind, the endeavor is to help you to be wholly healthy and happy and not focusing on the stress and the things that are going on in the world around us and becoming overwhelmed with that. So let us take a pause now to look at the, the scripture text. Uh, Elder, am I uh, on? I'm not sure. Uh, how am I doing here in terms of on the screen, et cetera? Um, I did change you to the to take up the screen, so okay. it, it's looking good. All right. I'm... I want to get the speaker view here, and then I still have um, some others on my screen. Okay, I, there I go. I can memorize it. All right, I'm good now. Thank you very much. Let's take a look at our scripture. We have at least three scriptures that we want to, uh, three or four texts, that will be the, the foundation of what we discuss here today. Uh, the first, of course, is our typical passage, which is Galatians 5 and verse 22. We're looking at the fruits of the Spirit. And of course, we are continuing with our series, uh, The Road to Character, uh, the sanctifying work of God in terms of character formation. And today, uh, the particular fruit that we're looking at is faithfulness. And several passages that we will allude to or take on the consideration today. Uh, one is... Um, um, Psalm 15 and verse 4, Psalm 15 and verse 4, and we'll come to that passage for certain. Uh, Hebrews 12 and verse 2, we will also look at that passage. Um, and then we could spend a whole lot of time and just uh, dwell on um, Lamentations chapter 3 and verse 23. And um, just let me say at this point, as I think about Lamentations, the book itself is, is, uh, is a book written by Jeremiah. Uh, Lamentation gives you an idea of what the book is about. Um, uh, Israel has been taken captive, and Jeremiah is just weeping that the people have not followed God, and they have reaped uh, what they have sown and what God had predicted concerning them because they turned their back on him that they would in, in, in indeed um, experience. And so uh, Israel is going through that uh, period of, of, of mourning and uh, tribulation and Jeremiah is weeping. But even in the midst of his weeping, please note this, in the midst of his weeping and not so much complaining, but just praying to God, crying out to God, Jeremiah in Lamentations 3 and verse 23 is able to say that God is faithful. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies. I mean, the novelty of the blessings that every day New blessings are continuously flowing. And then he says, great is thy faithfulness. In other words, Father, we have not been faithful. We have failed in every way. But in spite of that, you have been faithful. That's somewhat of the approach we want to take uh, today. Uh, so as we talk about these uh, Christian attributes, these gifts, uh, the, the fruits of the Spirit, um, what we want you to, to recognize, and we've talked about a number of them. We started with joy. Uh, last week, we talked about goodness. Uh, we talked about meekness. 
patient, long suffering, uh, the whole gambit, and today faithfulness. And one key point, component that I want us to see is that um, we see these are characteristics of who God is. And we'll come to a, a main passage, um, uh, Exodus 34. And you can turn there and we'll go there in a few moments. Exodus 34 and verse 6. We see these as attributes of who God is. These are his characteristics. And what we really are experiencing as, as human beings, as Christians, we are experiencing these gifts through God. God is pouring out his blessings upon us. God is, is patient with us. God is long-suffering with us. God is good to us. I mean, he's good, period, but he's good to us. God is faithful. He's faithful to us. So every one of these characteristics depict who God is. And what, we, what, what I'm hoping that we, we, we get from them is that as we see God in his grandeur, his beauty, his holiness, that we will want to emulate, that we would want him to come and dwell in us so that we might also share those attributes with others, that we might be Christ in the world. And if ever the world needed to experience Christ in it, now is the time. The love, the joy, the peace, the long-suffering, the patience, the gentleness. God is that way with us. And he wants to fill us, and he wants to be in the world, in us, to help make a major difference. And God help us to that extent. I pray that we can be just that. And so let me say this as we begin as well. Uh, I'm not trying to be negative. My attempt is not to be negative. Um, but if you have these gifts already, kindness and long suffering and gentleness, the fruits of the spirit, if you have them already, then uh, you don't need the Holy Spirit. <laughs> It is the Holy Spirit that gives us these gifts and lives out these gifts in us. And so the natural man is not patient. The natural man is not long-suffering. The natural man is not gentle and meek and kind and humble and, and faithful. That's not our nature. Christ in us, that then is our new nature, Christ in us. And so that's what I want to share with us. So we look at these, uh, a couple of words, uh, faith, which is pistis in the, the, the Greek, and then the Hebrew imuna, um, uh, faithfulness, uh, the balance of probability and authority will lead us to regard pistis, uh, which is the fruit of the spirit as faithfulness. So the word, uh, the Greek encapsulate faith as well as faithfulness. And so the spiritual man is faithful, faithful to his God, faithful to his work. I'm just backing up now, the spiritual man of woman, the individual, is faithful to his God, faithful to his work, to himself and to others. The life of faithfulness is the life of truth. Things are changing. <laughs> um, uh, they're not what they used to be in terms of faithfulness. And a whole lot of things are changing and not what they used to be. But um, at least in earthly matters, um, um, at all events, we used to pride ourselves on being people of our word. You know, we would give a handshake or we would say something and we would be careful that we were uh, available to carry out what we said, that we would keep our commitment to the things that we, that we have said. Uh, we may recall the splendor, the glow, uh, the splendor, which uh, still lingers a little uh, when uh, around us there were favorite or famous scenes in history where uh, men have risked everything and anything in order to keep their trust, to be faithful. Uh, we admire stories like that, but these things now, this kind of faithfulness 
is becoming fewer and fewer and far between. So, but, and it is this level of faithfulness, not that of belief. We're beyond belief. I mean, the devil believes and trembles. And so it's time to get beyond, I believe. And so what we want to look at in this message as it relates to faith and faithfulness is, um, uh, has to do with uh, four elements I want to deal with, beyond belief. Uh, four things that today, uh, God willing, we want to just uh, kind of breeze through, if you'll, you'll bear with me. The first is, is uh, it is a spiritual thing. And to consider that, we're going to look at Hebrews 12 too. So that's number one. And then uh, number two, we want to look at faithfulness to God. Thirdly, the faithfulness of man or woman, our faithfulness. So we have faithfulness to God, faithfulness to man, to man, to others. Uh, and then we want to look at, lastly, God's faithfulness. Now, you may notice this is just a little bit reverse of what I did last week. I started out talking about God's goodness. Today, I'm going to talk about the situation. Um, I'm going to talk about faithfulness to God and then faithfulness to man. And then I want to come back and look at a broad sense uh, at God's faithfulness to us. And so um, let's begin uh, then um, as we talk about this whole idea of uh, it is a spiritual thing. To do that, um, we go to Hebrews, Hebrews 12 and uh, verse 2. And I, I just, I, when I pick up this passage, I, I want to preach. <laughs> I, I want to go back to Hebrews 11. And it's, uh, it seems almost imperative that we need to go back to Hebrews 11, which we have classified as the faith chapter. It's the, the chapter of faith where we see all these warriors, uh, all these men, women who have been faithful. And, and what I want you to notice before we read uh, Hebrews 12 and verse 1 and 2, before we read that, go back. Uh, well, we're going to talk about it. But you go back in your le leisure time today and look at the characters there. It is always more than belief. It is more than an idea. What we see are actions. We see doing Abraham. He moved from one place to another. Abraham offered his son. We see um, uh, Samson, uh, Jephthah, uh, character after character, Noah. Uh, as we talked about people of faith, they were not just believing a particular thing, but they were doing by the grace of God. God in them working out the obedience that God required or asked of them. And so when we talk about faith then, we aren't talking about just believing, uh, having a concept, an idea, um, or trusting and believing, but it goes to the point that this then, as I inculcate this into my life, it becomes a way of life that this belief produces something that looks like God himself, that looks like his character. And so let's look at Hebrews 12 and verse one and two. I love this passage. Wherefore, seeing we are also compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, talking about all of those in chapter 11, what they have done, uh, not that they're looking at us, but their life, uh, their testimony by the way they live is a witness testimony to us of how we can be faithful by God's grace, how God expects us to be faithful in spite of losing our lives. We read the last few uh, verses of, of uh, chapter 11, it talked about many were sawed asunder and et cetera, how they died, gave their lives, but this is faithfulness. Moreover, when we consider uh, the book of Revelation, uh, one of the, the last uh, verses there, it says, be thou faithful unto death. That's what God has called us to do. To be faithful, number one. And then secondly, to be faithful even unto death. May God help us to be that kind of person, that kind of individual, that kind of Christian, faithful to exhibit his character uh, from this point forward until he shall come in the clouds of glory. Whatever the cost, to maintain 
uh, faithfulness. So let's continue the passage. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus. There we come. <laughs> looking unto Jesus. And so we're uh, we're able to do this, not looking at one another, not looking for others as an example, but looking unto Jesus. Why Jesus? Because Jesus, because he is the author, the source of our Christian graces. All graces stem from Jesus Christ himself. He is, he it is, who calls fallen man out of the dismal darkness of sin into his glorious light of the gospel. It is he, he, Jesus, who cleanses us from our previous life of sin and qualifies us to become sons and daughters of God. It is he who justifies us by his grace. It is he who plants our feet on the pathway to glory. So therefore, he is the source. He is the author of our faith. So it is he that gives it to us. And then it says, the author and finisher, the perfect term of our faith, the work of being made right with God is only the beginning of the Christian experience. The work of being made right with God. We call that justification. That uh, is the work that, 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 that only begins in the Christian experience. It's just the beginning, but Christ does that for us and in us. Now, we are not only to lay the foundation of repentance uh, from dead work, but to go on to perfection. Now, that perfection is, is, is not in the sense of that I don't have any errors, that I is just absolutely perfect, but it's talking about maturity, perfection, coming to the fullness. And we talk many Sabbaths about the fullness of the man Christ Jesus. So what we want to do is to mature and grow in his grace, just like plants. Plants that fail to mature, plants that fail to produce fruit are not very good, are not much good at all. As a matter of fact, I have a couple of trees in the backyard here that uh, I'm contemplating um, probably before the summer in cutting them down. My, my peach tree doesn't produce anymore. And it, it, it's covering uh, the ground. It's not useful to me uh, as a tree in the backyard. Yes, I know it gives off a little bit of oxygen. It has a few leaves on it, but not many leaves. So what we're looking for is maturity. And in the Christian experience, we must come to maturity, bringing forth fruit, <laughs> the very fruits we're talking about, developing fruit. And when we don't do that, we are useless as Christians. Wow, that's powerful. I didn't plan to say it like that, but um, the truth nevertheless, that tree has to go because it's not producing. God, I know he has mercy on me. I'm just thinking about how, how merciful he is with me and he has not cut me down. I'm, I'm thinking now of that parable when uh, uh, the... Uh, the, the gardener wanted to cut down the, uh, the only one to cut down the tree, but the gardener says, let, let alone for another year and let's dung around it, let's dig around it and fertilize it and, and, and hopefully it will produce. Well, I've let this tree remain out there long enough. My wife told me to cut it down a while back and I didn't do it. So uh, I, I've given it another year, but God forbid that that should be us in terms of when we fail to produce and to bring forth. So maturity, growing in grace, gaining the victory over every besetting sin. Our characters are to be transformed by the renewing of the mind. This is the work of the indwelling Christ as the perfecter of faith. This is the work of making us identical twins with Christ. The work of making us identical twins with Christ. We talked about justification. That work is sanctification, continuous growth, growing from glory to glory until we come to the fullness, maturity of Christ Jesus reflecting his character. Faith, pistis, 
It's a confidence of heart and mind in God and his ways that lead one to act in accordance with God's sovereign will. And let's back up and make sure you get that definition again. Pistis, or faith, faithfulness. A confidence of heart and mind, confidence in God and his ways that lead us. This confidence then leads to action. It leads one to act in accordance with his sovereign will. Now this, of course, is predicated or is cast, if you may, uh, upon the, the ability and the integrity of God, trusting God, uh, resting in God and on God, uh, knowing that God is faithful and will remain faithful in spite of our unfaithfulness, he remains faithful. And so this confidence and trust in him is what compels us then or catapults us out of ourselves to be faithful, to act on the things that we have in our hearts, this confidence in him. Faith cannot be passive. Faith cannot be passive. But it manifests itself in works of righteousness. And James says it very clearly, uh, James 2 and verse 17, he talks to us there about faith without works, uh, is good as dead and is, is left alone, is by itself, uh, faith without works. Uh, Paul tells us then in Galatians 5 and verse 6 that um, faith worketh by love. And so we see then that faith is active, it's not just a, a mental assent uh, to anything particularly. And it's this faith that we, we hold and we act upon. It is this faith or, or Christ's righteousness becomes ours through faith. We have to grasp it. We can't just say, I believe, but then taking on his life that he wants to give to us. And so Christ's righteousness becomes our faith. So let's quickly now, my time has, has already gotten away, but let's, let's look at uh, briefly uh, a few uh, important uh, why faith is important, or the importance of faithfulness. The grace of faithfulness is absolutely necessary to give value and force to every other grace of the Christian lifestyle. Now, we've talked all of the graces, the, uh, the, 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 the gifts, the fruit of the Spirit that we've been talking about, every one is essential. As a Christian, we must exhibit these characteristics, these attributes. But when we come to faithfulness, faithfulness seems to be the, the foundation of, of, of all the other um, elements or fruits of the Spirit. What do you mean by that? Well, what is a spacious, uh, beautiful home built on the sand? What is it really built on sand? What is it really worth as it's sapped by the, the, the high floods that come in and the wintry storms? Uh, what, what, what good is it? And uh, in other words, what are the fruits and talents and attainments of one who is destitute of faith and sincerity? What, I mean, how do we say it? Um, it it's like having a, a, a guard dog that can't or won't bark. <laughs> what good is it? If he's a guard dog uh, that won't bark or can't bark. Or what, what, what about a, um, a spouse, uh, a, a wife particularly, that uh, cooks very well, but is like a goma and won't stay at home? Um, it's not much good to you. And so then if you have some of these other attributes, uh, let's say you're meek and humble, uh, but you can't be trusted, you are not faithful to follow through then what good is to be meek and humble? To say, yes, I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll do it, and not do. We've talked about that at prayer meeting quite a bit, to say yes and then not do. It's best to not, to say, I won't do, and then to repent and do. But to say yes and then not have the, the gas in the tank to do what is necessary to be done, now that is the, in itself is deplorable. So this is what we mean by the importance of this whole idea of faithfulness. Uh, the importance of faithfulness is obvious as it is necessary to the credit of religion 
and the honor of Christ. What do I mean by that? Well, uh, nothing has brought so much scandal to the gospel as the conduct of hypocrites and apostates. Men and women um, of the world are always looking to spy defect in, in professing Christians. Um, they're looking for that. And so what we want to remain as, as Christians is to be faithful to what we've said, what we profess. Uh, so, I mean, like uh, Daniel. Uh, Daniel is probably the ideal Christian that we can look at from scripture when the, 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 the satraps or the other wise men sought to find problems with Daniel. They could not. They investigated his life. They looked through it. And they found that Daniel had been faithful in every regard. And it was his faithfulness that they used against him, his faithfulness in praying daily, three times a day, mind you. Um, so it was his faithfulness that got him in trouble with the satraps and ultimately thrown into the lion's den. And we'll talk about that, an idea that faith sometimes, our faithfulness may bring us through adversity or to adversity, but God then will bring us through. But he wants us to remain faithful regardless of the cost. So let me, let me hasten now. Let's talk about faithfulness to God. Faithfulness to God includes undisguised sincerity in service. Faithfulness to God. We must recognize that it is not faithfulness to the pastor that, uh, that the pastor is looking for or that we ought to be concerned about. But when we take on a responsibility or are asked to accept a challenge or a chore, we need to consider that I want, I recognize that I'm in service for God and I want to be faithful to him. It may warrant, however, as you accept the responsibility, it may warrant weariness, denial of comforts, the loss, uh, uh, loss of many kinds uh, in the process. Uh, faithfulness can mean disappointment, it can mean wandering, perhaps even death, um, uh, a supposed death, like in the case of Daniel. Uh, his faithfulness uh, brought him to a crisis in his life. And your faithfulness very well may bring you to a crisis. But the object is, what do you prefer more? Your life or his life? To live in honor of him? Uh, this is why we have many mockers, uh, have had many mockers in the past. They preferred death than to dishonor their Savior, their Lord, their King. Well, the admonition, of course, as I said earlier, is to be thou faithful unto death. Faithfulness to God is unreserved obedience to his revealed will. Whatever it is that God has command, when you look through the scriptures, then you ought to be looking through, reading the scriptures continually. So when we read through scriptures and we see a command of God, we see the will of the will of God, we see the mind of God. As a Christian, we are predisposed to do that. You see, to look into the mirror, the perfect law of liberty, and to see that we are marred or we are covered, and then walk away without the cleansing and and and, and cleaning our face and. Uh, allowing the word to wash us, the spirit and the grace of God to wash over us and to make us clean and pure and white as snow. That's what he wants to do for us. But to do that is not faithfulness. Faithfulness is obedience to the revealed will of God. Thirdly, faithfulness to God includes inflexible adherence to the profession of the gospel. And I like that word, inflexible adherence. In other words, you aren't vacillating you, one way today and another way the next time. This situation, I'll be this way because it's advantageous for me. Another situation is not very advantageous. Then I flip and I'm a different way. Uh, we sometimes as Christians can also be very moody. I, I just, I can't envision our Lord being a moody kind of person. If anything, he was certainly consistent in his life. And that's what we want to be, is consistent, uh, faithful, inflexible adherence 
to the profession of the gospel. I, again, this I'm not talking about being faithful to everything and everything. Being faithful in everything. One, because you don't know everything. You're still growing in grace. But the key phrase I'm looking at here is, yes, faithful to all that you know. Not faithful to everything, just faithful to all that you know. Inflexible adherence to the word of God. In other words, what we want to do then is to walk in integrity. Walk in the spirit. That is the integrity of our hearts and all will be well. Walk in harmony uh, uh, again with the baptismal vows that you've taken. Most of you uh, at one time or another have been baptized. And in order to be baptized, you probably should have uh, adhered or consented to various vows that you will renounce the world. You promise to be faithful in various areas in diet, uh, lifestyle, uh, tithing and offering faithfulness. You covenanted to do that. Uh, inflexible adherence to the revealed will of God, uh, to the gospel. Um, he expects us to be faithful to those baptismal vows. And so I ask you at 1229, how are you doing with that? Where are you today with your faithfulness to that which you committed and said that you would do? How is your faithfulness? Well, I got two more points and I need to hasten. Give me, give me a few minutes. Faithfulness to man. Faithfulness to man. Why is that on here? Because God is faithful to man. And he wants us to be faithful to mankind as well. What do I mean by this? Uh, the word here may be used in the, the sense of fidelity. Uh, it may denote the Christian will be faithful, will be a faithful individual, an individual faithful to his or her word or promise. Uh, a man or woman can be trusted and can be confided in. When someone tells you something, is it imperative that you tell others? Um, or do you just enjoy the idea of gossiping and sharing? Has it been told to you in confidence? Then you should listen and be faithful as a friend in sharing with them. Faithful in not sharing their confidentiality with others. Fidelity, faithfulness, faithful to man. True religion makes an individual faithful. The Christian is faithful as a man, faithful as a neighbor, faithful uh, as a friend, faithful as a father, faithful as a husband, faithful as a son, faithful as a mother. He is faithful to his contract, faithful to his promise. No one can be an authentic Christian who is not faithful. Faithful. Now I use the word authentic. No one can truly be an authentic Christian who is not faithful because God is faithful. And that is in itself a sense of integrity. It's the foundation of who we are as individuals. As a matter of fact, that passage I talked about earlier, Psalm 15 and verse 4, it says something like this, He honors them that fear the Lord. He that sweareth to his own hurt and changeth not. In other words, if you've made a commitment and now you see that you're going to lose or this is not advantageous for you, that you will be faithful because you've said it and do it. God expects us to be faithful. Wow. Well, there's a couple other things. Let me just hasten on to, to share this. Um, this requires that we be true to our word. Faithfulness to men requires justice and integrity in our course of action. Faithfulness requires steadfastness in our engagement. And lastly, faithfulness to men requires a bold, conscientious discharge of all the relative duties of life. Whatever a Christian finds to do, he or she 
ought to do it with all of his or her might, not slothfully, not slothfully, but with his or her might, with integrity, doing it as unto the Lord, our very best in everything. In everything we do, we ought to shine because we've given it our very best. Now, it may not be the best, but it's our very best. That's what God requires of us as integrity, integrous, and that is classified as being faithful in every relation or duty of life. Now, finally, let's look to God here and talk about his faithfulness. First of all, let me say this. We want to emulate that. As we see it, we want to emulate it. We want to become like that. By beholding him, we become changed. We shall see him as he is, for we shall be like him, our semantic center. We shall be like him. That's the objective. So as we look and see how God is so faithful and kind to us, that's the way we want to be. Desire of Ages 320, uh, 302 says that all who long to bear the likeness of the character of God shall be satisfied. All who long to bear the likeness of his character will be satisfied. The Holy Spirit never leaves unassisted the soul who is looking to Jesus, the soul who is looking to him. He takes of the things of Christ and shows them unto him. If the eye is kept fixed on him, that's that passage we were looking at, Hebrews 12 too, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher, keeping our eyes fixed on him, doing that, the work of the Spirit ceases not until the soul is conformed to the very image of God. We can be like him. He desires that we be like him. He will live in us so that we will be like him. Christ in us, the hope of glory. Again, Galatians 3.20. Not I, but Christ that lives in me. That's the idea we look for. So now let's look hastily about this God of faithfulness. Give me just a few more moments. To do that, we consider Exodus 34 and verse 6. I made mention of that text earlier, 34 and verse 6. We find, uh, uh, again, that uh, Hebrew word um, in that verse, uh, hesed, uh, keset, uh, in the Briggs Drive um, Brown um, uh, dictionary uh, in the Hebrew, it, it, it tells us what that really means. It says, uh, let me read the text, and I'll tell you the word. Um, that is used here, what verse I say, chapter 34 and verse 6. Stick with me. This thing is good. You, 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 you'll enjoy it. Uh, 34 and verse 6. 34 and verse 6. And the Lord passed by. This is Moses' experience when uh, he's going up to the mountain the second time to get the commandments of God. And then Moses has the, the audacity to say to God, Lord, show me your glory. I want to see you. I, 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 I want to know you more fully. And praise God for such an idea. If you and I had the temerity to do that, God will show himself to us. And thanks be to God, he is constantly revealing himself to us. And oftentimes he does it through his word. Now he can do it miraculously and he may do that. Uh, I don't know. He's not limited to how and what he can do. But I do know that he is no respecter of person. And if you ask him, he will do for you what he's done for many others, for what he's done for Moses. And Moses asked, Lord, show me your glory. And so the Lord says to him, and it says this, and the Lord passed by before him, Moses in the mount, and proclaimed, the Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth. That word goodness there, the keset, uh, that is uh, translated in, in the uh, Browns, Briggs, and Driver, um, it, it is translated goodness, kindness, and faithfulness, all three wrapped up in one. It, it, it's just amazing. It, it's all three of those fruits, those attributes tied into one, goodness, kindness, and faithfulness. And God says, this is who I am, and I'm allowing this to pass before you. God is faithful. And as I was saying earlier with Jeremiah, looking around, seeing how unfaithful Israel had been, but he could testify 
that God has been faithful. We have not been faithful, Lord, but that has not prevented you from being faithful. Consider every morning that you wake up, the blessings that are right before you, the blood in your vein, the eyes open, you see, uh, you're able to talk, walk, have your breakfast, uh, safety, security, the list goes on. And it's everything that he has provided for us. Nothing we've done for ourselves. It is of his mercy that we are not consumed. It's his mercy that we are actually woke up in the morning. There are many that don't wake up. He's faithful in spite of our unfaithfulness. Oh, thanks be to God. So great that there has never been an exception to his faithfulness. <laughs> I love that. There's never been an exception to his faithfulness. I mean, you can search the world over, above the stars, <laughs> below the earth, all on the earth. And you look at all of these characters, and no one has a testimony in which God has not been faithful. God help us to forever remain faithful, just as he has been to us. No item in the whole role of divine promise to us has been unfulfilled by God. Every promise that God has made, he has or will fulfill it. Wow. He has never reneged on a promise. Now, as you read from your Sabbath school lesson, you have to read carefully and recognize that a promise sometimes is conditional. But as we look at that, even in the conditional promise is based on us and our faithfulness. But there are other promises, many, myriad, uh, many of them, in which uh, that faithfulness on our part is not attached to it. And God has never reneged on his promise. No one thing has failed. This is what Joshua said to Israel. God had promised them when they were coming through the wilderness that he would be with them. He would bring them through all that he would do for them. Read it. Look at it. Many promises. And Joshua at last said to the children of Israel, nothing that God has said has failed of all that he promised. He promised he would move out our enemy. He promised he would be with us. He would sustain us. He would give us all that we need. And nothing that God has said has failed. He gave them the land that he promised to them. And he wants to give to us a land as well. Well, I'm going to close. Uh, just jumping toward a close. He said to us, my loving kindness will I not utterly take away from them, nor suffer my faithfulness to fail. This is God's ultimate promise. This passage you find in uh, Psalm 89 and verse 33. Psalm 89 and verse 33. He says, and this is the promise, my faithfulness to you, my covenant with you, I will not suffer to fail. God will be faithful to his promise. Now, listen to this. I had one thought there that I, I don't want to escape me. Let me go back and get it. <laughs> Here it is. Um, Christ object lesson uh, 148. The honor of his throne, God's throne, the honor of his throne is staked for the fulfillment of his word unto us. Listen to that. The honor of his throne is staked for the fulfillment of his word to us. And so we're admonished, find a relevant promise in God's word. Find a relevant promise and then claim it. <laughs> Knowing that he is faithful, he will fulfill it. At last, he says to us, I will not fail you. My faithfulness to you will not fail. And then the last word I want to share, he says, I, even I am he, that blotteth out thy transgression for mine own sake, not for our sake, but for his own sake, he said, and will not remember your sin. So no sin of man can make God unfaithful. 
So regardless of your plight today, your sin, how you've lived your life, how you've gotten to this point, what predicament you're in, God has been faithful, has to be your testimony. There's no other testimony. He's been faithful because you are listening to me. He's been faithful. And he's covenant to remain faithful even unto the very end. So as we prepare to close, I want to give you my behavioral purpose. How shall you respond to this message? Start growing your character by developing the habit of testifying to his faithfulness. Testify to his faithfulness by your life and your words. Develop the habit of testifying to his faithfulness by your life and your words. And by God's grace, you will day by day become more and more like him, growing into the fullness of the statue of the man, Christ Jesus. Let's hear these words now from uh, the song artist um, that sings the hymn, He's Been 